June 10th, 1992, folks. 8.54 p.m. Toronto time, 7.54 p.m. You know what, Winnipeg time. And Sean reading the book. I'm uh, showing on video. slower. Like this? Like when you're filming around the room, like say across, like if you're filming all along there you go really slow. Not like that? Right. Actually. Wow. In Zoom and on film. Amazing. This is David, David, our neighbor, everyone. You don't have to do that. Can't you just talk normally? And this is Lynn, our other neighbor as well. You don't Hi. To, you don't have to do that. You can Hi, just talk neighbor. normally, can't you? What a face. <laughs> what a face. Aren't you surprised I can work my brother's camcorder? Yeah, that's a nice camera. I always knew you were a talented boy, Kathy. I'm just doing a tour of the place around here. We're on film! We're immortalized, you know. Oh, you're up. He's taping you. Yeah! You're making a movie! I <laughs> oh, believe me, I went outside in my pajamas. Hmm. And taped a couple of neighbors in pajamas. Yeah. The neighbors were in pajamas too? No. Oh. Are you looking at all the things that have been done on this day? No. Just putting the date and the time on. Sorry, people, we were taping two neighbors where, while I was in pajamas, and we were running out of tape. So we're going to start all over again with our tour. Just forget about what you saw before on the other tape. Okay, bye-bye. I mean, let's tape. <laughs> oh, but they record that big boom. 
There's mommy. When I'm done the garage, I'll film the rest of it. I want you in the middle. Okay. That tells you we're in a stinky place called the washroom. This is my airport creation. Pause! Greetings everyone, it's Sean from the future here. Uh, this is being recorded on March 20th, 2019, uh, about 28 years after the footage you've been seeing. And I am joined by a very special guest. Hi, it's Cass. Just kidding, it's Cass from the future. <laughs> yes, Cassidy from the future, full of uh, lots of memories, nostalgia, and cringe as we look at these old videos, and uh, he gets to see, uh, you know, what an amazing cameraman he was from a very early age. So, Cass, uh, this, of course, is one of your world-famous, well, now world-famous, tours of the house, and yes. uh, <laughs> most specifically... Uh, a tour of your room and th this was actually kind of notable in that it was the one time you really filmed like kind of an in-depth tour of your room so I thought it would be interesting to kind of pull you in and, uh, and get some of your your comments here and uh, in deference to Multimedia Chronicles viewers and uh, the nostalgia freaks that they are I thought they'd be most interested to hear some of your uh, comments about your video collection here which is actually quite impressive for a Absolutely. seven year old yeah yeah so so what uh so looking at the first uh still here what uh what are we looking at here what do we got here so i have some videos uh that white four by four there though um, um of course okay. <laughs> we'll start with the car <laughs> But anyway, yeah, the video collection, um, these are just obviously what I got, I guess, for birthdays and Christmases and that kind of up till this point. Mm -hmm. uh, looking So looking at the very first one, I can make out, uh, can't see what's quite the left of it, but I can see Home Alone's on the left. Uh, yeah. That was one I really quite liked. We'll get, a, uh, we'll get a better look at what's over on the left in the next picture, I think. So. That's right, yeah. So yeah. I got Home Alone, Problem Child, um, and then uh, some other cartoon ones. Double Trouble, I believe, was a uh, Rescue Rangers movie. Okay. I yeah. remember right that I had. Um, mm -hmm. No, so I got Roger Rabbit. Uh, then we've got some Tailspin, uh, some of the, I guess, uh, direct-to-video uh, yeah. ones. And then uh, a bunch of DuckTales as well, which I was really into at that age. Yes. Um, so I noticed you have seven volumes of DuckTales there. Yeah. Uh, some of those I... Sorry, I was just going to say, some of those I don't actually know if I ever watched. I think oh, uh, some really? of them may actually still be in the packaging. Oh, wow. Uh, looking, I, I've looked at these pictures pretty thoroughly over the past little while before we got around to doing this commentary. I think I figured out what some of the other ones are. Uh, okay. bet between Double Trouble and uh, Roger Rabbit, I think that's the Tiny Toons movie, isn't it? That Is could it, be. I just don't, I don't know if that was it, out by then. It looks like Buster Bunny down just in the little picture there. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And I'm I trying think... to remember. I don't have it in front of me. But I'm trying to remember what year that came out because I know I did have the How I Spent My Summer Vacation on video. Right. But uh, I don't know if this was out by then. If it, or if it was, it was very new. 
Yeah, yeah. And then I think between Roger Rabbit and uh, the first Tailspin, I think that's an American tale, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I think you're right, actually. Just just going by the color scheme, like I can't read it at all. But <laughs> yeah, um, well, it's like red lettering on an orange package, so it's that's really right. Big. And and then there's a Winnie the Pooh collection there. And then, I think I actually uh, remember which one that is, and it was one I watched quite a few times. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, th I, th I think it's the one where he gets his bum stuck in the tree with all the bees. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's like one of the one of the classic, one uh, of the more famous ones. Yeah, I just remember that scene cracking me up as a kid. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's uh, now. Did you actually have something to say about that little car there? Uh, I did actually. So I think <laughs> it's like a it's like a Range Rover or something like that. But what I do remember about that is one year. Uh, Mom and I did a gingerbread house. Okay. And we, um, so we built the house in that, and then we made kind of a yard scene, and we used a lot of the extra icing sugar to make snow. And so this was actually Mum's idea. She took that 4 by 4 and she put it and made it look like it was sort of skidding in the snow, like trying to come into a stop in front of the house. Oh, nice. And that's how we had our gingerbread house scene set up that year. Well, darn, we're going to have to try to find pictures of that. I know uh, I don't know. I know I don't have any, but I'm sure Mum does. I'm sure she'd have it somewhere, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, well, let's take, uh, we're just going to do a brief little swoop here. and Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the next picture. So, yeah, this one moves over to the left. So we right. can see a little bit more of what's on the left there. So, uh, so let's see. So we've got a few more uh, purchase tapes there. Can you see what those ones are? I think I know what they are. I'll see if you can figure out what they are. Yeah, so next to Home Alone, well, two over from Home Alone is definitely Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. Yes. I can definitely make that one out. Yeah. Um, the other one, it looks like some kind of a double feature, but I can't, or, yeah, I can't quite tell what it is. I think what it is, actually, is um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yes. With, with Tummy Trouble. That's uh, the, right, the, yeah. The rabbit short, yeah. That was the, uh, yeah, I remember. And actually, I think Tummy Trouble was actually my introduction to Roger Rabbit. I actually saw that before I ever saw the full movie. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. well, that's that's actually a pretty good introduction because then you kind of mm -hmm. get to see Roger in his element doing, you know, a zany cartoon. Exactly, um, yeah. Now, of course, I'm sure this will be of interest to Multimedia Chronicles viewers. You have quite a stack of VHS tapes there of ones that uh it looks like it was i i recognize the labels on the little letters and numbers as right. part of mum's uh you know organization scheme she had like f the letter f for feature films and then there would be a number okay uh and then she had an index like sheets of paper that would say what was on each tape she had like quite a meticulous indexing system for them hmm. um but this i think was at a point where she was like well i'm never gonna watch these again and also she was buying movies on video so she just figured well might as well just tape over them so i think what she had done is just gave you a bunch of the old tapes and it's like here you can use these for taping whatever mm -hmm. um so my question is, what kind of stuff did you tape back then when you were seven going on eight? Uh, well, I was into a lot of the stuff really uh, a normal seven, eight-year-old of the early 90s was into. Uh, mm -hmm. Golden Girls, for one. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful kids show, Golden Girls. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I actually, uh, no, in all seriousness, I, I quite like that show. Mom and I used to watch mm -hmm. it together, and so every once in a while when it came on repeats, I would tape episodes that I liked or, or to watch right. later or something like that. Yeah. Um, same, uh, I think I'm stumbling on remembering the name of the production company, but they also did a show, Empty Nest, which is kind of forgotten yes. now. With but uh, it was actually, yeah. Richard Mulligan, yeah. It was near, if not at number one, one season it was actually on. So it was really a hit show in its prime. And then it's I, kind of just disappeared yeah. off network television. Yeah, I remember that one. It was it was huge. And uh, mm -hmm. it was actually a spinoff from the Golden Girls. It was, that's I, right. I remember, yeah. Because he, he, the main character originally appeared uh, in a few episodes of that and then uh, went on to his own series. And I was thinking like that was kind of uh, a significant show. like probably resonated with you in ways you didn't quite... Uh, understand at the time because it was about uh, a divorced man and of course dad and mom were going through their divorce mm -hmm. around this time as well so uh, I wonder uh, if that might have been part of the reason it kind of clicked with you that could have been actually I think in this he was actually widowed in the story but of course I probably wouldn't have understood that at the time I would have just That's understood true, that yeah. the mom's not there and it's these older you know adult children and that yeah. um, 
And uh, yeah, no, I, I always, uh, with a lot of shows, I always really kind of identified with characters, I think. So yeah. I think both of those shows had characters on there that I just really kind of had an appeal to me. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, for different reasons. That Another thing I used to record a lot, you know, this is getting a little more into a typical kid experience, was Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just different ones that were on. Specifically, I would record the commercials when they were on as well. Oh, and what I used to do, so yeah, so I mean, if those are still in good shape, which I I'm, know I have those tapes somewhere, yes. um, I've probably got some I could pull off. Um, Send them to me. I can uh, <laughs> I can clean them up and make nice, uh, you know, get the best quality that can be gotten from them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but specifically what I would do is I would record the commercials so then I could bring mom into my room and be like, Mom, here's a montage of all the things I'd like for Christmas, please. <laughs> and basically, I'm just, you know. That's brilliant. So I, I would love show it. her, like, I would show her, like, a haphazard 10-second recording of what I could get of the commercial. Because it's like the commercial will come on. And, oh, this yeah. is the thing that I want. And quickly, oh, you know, yeah. hit record. and Right. So you you know, get, so, like, bits of them. <laughs> so mom, poor mom would get, like, scan lines and, like, half of the name of the thing. And then, you know, be like, that, that's the thing. <laughs> Did you see that? That fuzzy, garbagey picture? That's what I want. Uh, uh, one of them in yeah. particular, I remember, uh, was the, I think it was called the Raging Thunder or something like that. It was a remote control monster truck. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That I really, really wanted. I actually did get it for, uh, I think, my birthday. Um, nice. Would have been around this time too, so I may have actually gotten footage of it somewhere. Oh, possibly. But yeah, uh, but yeah I remember that was a thing I really wanted, and yeah, I remember, of course, in the toy commercials, you know, it's always there's lightning and it's over this rugged dirt oh, terrain, course. and it looks so yeah. awesome. And then you get it, and you basically just spend an hour running it into your bedpost or something. <laughs> Pretty much around the kitchen or something. It's like, yeah. Well, this somehow, is, this somehow, is, it doesn't look as epic going over carpet. No, I remember it was the same thing with action figure commercials. They'd always be on these amazing diorama like landscapes, like really elaborate, and uh, it, it was never the same. <laughs> no, not even close. But uh, it's like, oh, it doesn't come with the entire set that they use in the commercial. Well, damn. Um, okay, so just another uh, little swoop here, and we'll we'll go over to the third picture. Okay. Uh, so this is the rest of the uh, uh, DuckTales uh, collections of that. The other uh, side, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, Mickey's Magical World. Yeah. Uh, which I vaguely remember. And uh, notice, actually, it's kind of interesting how, um, you know, how organized it is. You know, I have the tailspin, and then I have all the DuckTales. Then I have yeah. all the Disney stuff kind of at the other end, too. Yeah. It looks like you've got a couple of Mickey ones. I see a Donald Duck one. Uh, can't tell what the other one is because the barcode is facing out instead of the character right. picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the one on the end is Donald in Math Magic Land, which was one of my favorites. Oh, as yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, that one uh, that I, I watched several times. Uh, and then I, it looks like on the top there is the clamshell release of 101 Dalmatians. Now, that was the live action one, I think, wasn't it? No, the live action one was still a few years out at this point, so this okay. would have been the animated. Oh, it was the animated one. Okay. Yeah. I didn't remember. Now, you mentioned uh, before we started here, you had something to say about the first uh, DuckTales uh, tape there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I noticed uh, that most of them are in really nice condition, but that one uh, isn't. Why, why is that, Cass? Well, it was the episode <laughs> I used to watch the most often, I think, so the tape was very rarely ever in the slipcover. Uh-huh. And I also, for some reason, took to wearing that slip clever as a glove every once in a while. <laughs> so I like I completely bowed out the corners, and like as you can see, it's all kind of split and cracked in that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other ones obviously are still in, in acceptable shape, but uh, yeah, uh, how that didn't disown me from my my movie collecting <laughs> brother, I'll never know. But uh, well, I have a little addendum to that story. Uh... A few years later, this would have been 97 or 90, or maybe Christmas 97 or 98. I can't remember exactly. I think it was Christmas 98. Uh, I got for Christmas the Star Wars uh, special edition box set uh, on VHS. It had all three of the special edition versions, like the 1997 special edition versions of the original Star Wars trilogy. And I don't think you had seen Star Wars yet, or you hadn't seen it in a long time. 
So we all sat down to watch it because we hadn't seen the special edition versions. We were curious, you know, what was added, what was changed. Um, so we sat down to watch it. So we're sitting there watching it. Like, literally, it, this thing has been out of the shrink wrap for maybe a couple of hours. Oh, and no. we're sitting down to watch Star Wars. And I'm, you know, watching, enjoying the movie. And I look over, and Cass has the slipcover for Star Wars jammed onto his foot like a shoe. I'm like, Cass, what are you doing? It's like, what? I just, like... I like putting my foot in the slipcover. It's like, but it's it's like a collector's edition. What are you doing? So, not out of the shrink wrap two hours, and it looked similar to that DuckTales volume you see there. <laughs> so, thanks, kid. Appreciate it. I, I should point out, we were reasonably well off growing up. I was able to afford shoes. I didn't have to just wear slipcovers to school. <laughs> That's right. He just went to school wearing VHS boxes on his feet yeah and on his hands okay so uh let's see here okay so i think we do another little swoop okay so this is uh, i'm not sure if you'll be able to discern what all this stuff is it just looked interesting to me we have this yep. haphazard pile of stuff on your desk. Looks yes. like a, a hardcover book, a pile of cars, and some softcover books. So, any idea what any of that stuff is? Nope. Okay, then. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I will say is uh, what I can actually make out and remember more is the little sort of red thingies in behind the hardcover book. Oh, okay, um, yeah. I remember like, I had these sort of desk organizational things, and uh, it looks like I, I had some small little figurines in them or something like that. Yeah. Um, the red and white thing next to it, I'm pretty sure, is a pencil sharpener. And okay, yeah. if you actually look back at the other pictures, you can see, um, like, I've got, uh, like, in the one that kind of points at the middle, I've got some white out, um, which apparently I tested on the back of my desk, because you can see the giant smudge there as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, it was like, yep, it works. Okay, actually, this it kind of looks like the smudge is like giving us the finger a little bit, but what is it? <laughs> okay? Let me, I'll uh, oh, yeah, it does actually. But, or, you, or if I'd have drawn another one, it would have been like the rock on symbol or something. That's right, yeah. Um, but no, I have that little colored thing that has like uh, little uh, like post it notes or something like that in there, yeah. And uh, I remember, like, I used to actually write things on those or like that. I think Mum saved one of them. Uh, I think it was like I wrote an I love you, Mummy, or something like that on it. You know, gotcha. typical sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then over on the very far right, there's a big stack of pencil crayons in that. But no, I remember having everything kind of at the back of the desk, sort of all organized like that. So I remember when I used to sit at my desk and, you know, do homework or work on something and that. Uh, I always really liked kind of having everything kind of where it was um, set right. up on there. Yeah, no, it, it was very, uh, very organized. Certainly, uh, I'm sure a lot more than my stuff was when I was that age. Yeah, I never remember a lot as a kid having the stereotypical messy room, really. Like, I mean, obviously, my desk, I've got kind of cars all over the place and that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I always tried to sort of keep things sort of where they went uh, and that a uh, you know, fair bit. And I, I kind of remember that uh, from what I'm seeing here. Mm. So uh, the, it begs the question, what? What went wrong between I, then and I now? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like eight-year-old like eight cast could come over and teach 34-year-old cast a few things. Okay, so we got one more here. I think we've got a little bit more looking around the room before we get there. So we'll see you guys in just a few seconds here. June 18th. Films. Okay, here we are. So, uh, just wanted to pause on this because uh, th th this is something that I was always kind of jealous about. Now, Cass, at seven years old, had his own TV and his own VCR in his room, free to use for whatever, <laughs> anytime he wanted. Now, when I was growing up, I grew up kind of at the dawn of the VCR era, and when I was a teenager... As uh, many of our my viewers will know, I like to record stuff off TV. The stuff I recorded most often were things like uh, Transformers. I recorded quite a, pretty much every day. I would try to record the Transformers and uh, stuff like Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future and uh, Max Headroom and 
a few other random shows here and there. But here's the thing, is my parents were always really, like, kind of, I don't know, sticks in the mud about me recording stuff for some reason. It's like, well, what do you care? I'm spending my allowance on the tapes and stuff. And it's like, wow, you're just spending all your time recording things and blah, 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 blah. It's like, no. It's like, Transformers is a half hour a day. I come home after a crummy day at school. I want to record my favorite cartoon. So they had this rule that, well, you can only record stuff if you're uh, in the basement and you can only be down there if you're playing with your brother. It's like, fine, I can work with that. So I would get home from school and it's like, hi, Cass, I'm home. Let's go downstairs and play. Wee! So we go and run downstairs. I'd have like five minutes before my show came on. It's like, let's go play. So Cass would be like, yay, we're going to play. So we'd run downstairs to quote unquote play. And then I'd put on my tape for Transformers. And it's like, okay, just go play in the storage room or something, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult. To my defense, I was a moody, miserable teenager, so I just wanted to watch my fucking cartoons <laughs> and, and unwind after yet another shitty day getting bullied at school. But, um, yeah, eventually my parents caught on to that trick and, uh, and imposed more restrictions on my recording. So it just made me so jealous. It's like, year, like a few years later, like it's not even a thing anymore. Cass just has his own VCR and TV. <sighs> I'm just imagining, like, I was, like, uh, in this era, like, Sean, come on, let me show you my room. And you just pause and look at the VCR, just like, what the hell? <laughs> Pretty much. I'm having no idea why like, you're reacting this way. After all the hell I went through just to record the damn Transformers, they just give you a VCR. It's like... <sighs> The other thing I was picturing, it's like you hear mom coming down the stairs and I'm just picturing you bolting to the storage room with a toy in hand, like, wee hee, I'm a play. <laughs> and then mom goes, mom goes back upstairs and you just kind of trail out. It's like, yeah, we carry on. <laughs> That's right. Carry on and don't come out of the storage room until I say so. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Basically, what I'll just add is uh, is obviously yeah, I remember where this was set up, and that it's to the right of my desk, uh, yes. kind of near the near the door, because uh, mm -hmm. I remember like I could just sit on my I usually just sit on the end of my bed and watch shows or just sit on the floor or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, one little thing I remember, yeah, was uh, just down in the very bottom left corner, that little red thing. Mm -hmm. uh, not only did I have my own TV and VCR, I had my own phone. Well, and then. that <laughs> <laughs> yes. Spoiled middle class child much. Um, <laughs> no, I have my own phone, and that was actually a Ferrari Testarossa phone. Oh, so and an it expensive was, phone. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like it was. Yeah, it was a corded phone, obviously, as they all were in that time. But well, yeah, um, yeah. No, it, you'd pick it up like the top of the car, and it had the little dial pad and like that, and and yeah, that was my car phone. Like literally. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, I think we'll let seven-year-old Cass take over the rest of the tour here. So thank you very much for joining us from the future and uh, and sharing some of your memories with us. And if you suffer from motion sickness, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to minimize it as much as I could in the editing, but there's only so much you can do. You can't make silk from a sow's ear, as they say. Take gravel. There's that sign again, folks. The end. Bye.